Hello and welcome to the Charismatic Voice. This week we'll be focusing on water and the importance of hydration. Now, in order to dive into detail about vocal hydration, we need to know more about the anatomy of your voice. There are three actual layers of the vocal folds, a muscle, a ligament, and a mucous membrane. The muscle is called the vocalis muscle and is the most internal part of your vocal folds. It shortens and relaxes to help create pitch vibrations. The vocal ligament lies next to the muscle and connects two different pieces of cartilage. It's very elastic and bouncy and made of intermediate and deep layers of lamina propria. You can think of this as like connective tissue that resembles a rubber band. And next to the vocal ligament is the mucous membrane, which is made of a final layer of lamina propria and the epithelium. The main purpose of epithelium in your vocal cords is to protect them and excrete mucus. I know, ewy, greek, gross, like vocal boogers, what? No, mucus is actually very important. It's essentially the lubrication for your vocal cords, and we'll talk about it a lot more. Now, when you're dehydrated, all of this vocal anatomy has problems making these fast vibrations which create pitch. Your blood flow slows down and it causes muscles, like your vocalis muscle, to become stiff and more likely to swell. A stiff vocalis muscle means that it's more difficult to move quickly or vibrate, especially at higher frequencies, and a swollen muscle is also more difficult to move. To make up for stiff or swollen vocal folds, singers often press a lot more air pressure up, which in turn forces the vocal folds to work harder, and they in turn become more swollen. It's a vicious cycle, and it gets exponentially worse. Studies have shown that you are more likely to cause permanent damage to muscles while you're dehydrated. Keep in mind that delayed onset muscle soreness from dehydration post intense exercise or a big concert often doesn't set in for 24 to 48 hours, so you might not be aware that you're causing damage. Now, the ligament and mucous membrane part of your vocal cords are highly viscous. This means they're specifically easy to vibrate. That's partially because they're filled with lots of water. They're easy to jiggle. Suppose a person doesn't drink enough water. The viscosity of the vocal tissue goes down, making it more difficult to phonate, so a person pushes more air pressure up, more swelling happens, becomes even more dry from lots of air, etc., etc. Vicious cycle. And then there's the mucus, that gooey substance that's like lubrication for your vocal cords. Ideally, it's thin and smooth and more like water than dried up boogers. Smooth mucus protects the vocal cords and promotes fluid, non-sticky movement. But if you're dehydrated, that mucus becomes thick and gooey. Sometimes it's so gooey that it blocks the airway or stops the vibration of the vocal cords altogether and your voice falters or cracks. <laughs> If you're feeling particularly raspy, or have a lot of phlegm, or need to clear your throat a lot, maybe you should hydrate. A couple other fascinating facts about dehydration are that it causes dry mouth. A bad breath. When you don't have enough water, your salivary glands can't produce enough saliva, and this leads to weird mouth noises, mouth odor, and drier air on your vocal cords. Also, your brain actually gets smaller, which makes it really difficult to remember that three hour long Russian opera. So how do you hydrate? There are several ways to get water into your vocal tract. First and most obvious, drink more water. This means that the water is going to go down your esophagus into your stomach and get digested and eventually move its way up into your larynx. The most recent studies have shown that it takes about 45 minutes for water to actually get into your voice. Plain old water works for most people, but if you sweat a lot, it can be helpful to drink electrolytes like what you find in Gatorade or coconut water. These can help you hydrate more quickly. Another way that your body gets water is through the cells in your mouth. Cool fact, the membranes of cells in human tissues actually have these little pores that water can come directly in and out of. Water is a very simple molecule. It doesn't have to be broken down or digested for our cells to have access to it. But keep in mind that that water is in your mouth and it doesn't actually touch your larynx. To get direct hydration to your vocal cords, you can simply breathe moist air. I definitely recommend owning a humidifier, especially if you're in a dry climate. And also, I'm a huge fan of personal steamers. They're great for intermission during a big concert or a break during a recording session. 
Another way to get topical vocal hydration is to use a spray, but be careful. Some sprays have been shown to actually go past the larynx and cause trouble in the lungs. And be aware that not only the exterior of the vocal cords needs to be hydrated, the inner tissue and muscle need hydration as well. Any way you cut it, you're not gonna get instant rehydration. So how much should you drink? The Institute of Medicine recommends consuming 3.7 liters of water per day for men and 2.7 for women, but that varies a lot according to climate and person and activity. Also, if you drink caffeine or alcohol or you smoke or you take drugs that are drying or decongestants, you'll need to drink a lot more water. Our thirst mechanism is sadly slow and it lags behind our actual level of hydration. So if you're thirsty, you are already dehydrated.